What's up, sunshine? Welcome to the show. I'm Coy Wire. This is CNN 10, your 10 minutes of news where I simply tell you the what, letting you decide what to think. Teacher Time Tuesday, this August 26th. Thank you to all the educators out there inspiring and informing us. And thanks for allowing us to be part of your day. Go ahead and give a teacher a high five, heart hands, a fist bump today. Let them know I see you. Now, let's get to your news. We start with a powerful tropical cyclone that's battering parts of Southeast Asia. Typhoon Kachigi made landfall in Vietnam Monday after churning in the nearby Gulf of Tonkin. The powerful storm barreled into the nation's central provinces with torrential rain and dangerous winds. It's the fifth typhoon to hit Vietnam this year and the most powerful yet. It was equal to roughly a Category 1 hurricane at landfall. Authorities shut down schools, closed airports, and evacuated tens of thousands of people ahead of the storm. It's expected to bring up two feet of rain as it moves inland, spurring concerns of mudslides and flash flooding in the mountainous region. Prior to hitting Vietnam, Kajiki soaked China's southernmost point, Hainan Island, over the weekend, downing trees and flooding homes. Confused on typhoons and how they differ from hurricanes? Well, here's a refresher. They're the same type of storm. Both are tropical cyclones with sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour. The key difference is their location. Typhoons occur in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Hurricanes, like last week's Hurricane Aaron, occur in the Eastern and Central Pacific, as well as the Atlantic. To Washington, D.C. now. U.S. President Donald Trump welcomed South Korean President Yi Jae-myung to the White House for their first meeting since the South Korean leader was elected to power in June. The two leaders talked trade, security, and the future of American troops on South Korean soil. More than 28,000 U.S. troops are currently stationed in South Korea as part of a mutual defense treaty dating back to the Korean War in the 1950s. This meeting came as the U.S. had been demanding that South Korea allow more flexibility surrounding those troops, which would enable them to respond to China if needed. This next story features an out-of-this-world special delivery. A SpaceX cargo ship successfully docked at the International Space Station as part of NASA's latest resupply mission. And get this, the robotic capsule even parked itself. Yep, autonomously. It carried more than 5,000 pounds of food, supplies, and scientific experiments for astronauts aboard the station. NASA says these experiments include bioprinting tissue in space, as well as studying the loss of astronaut bone mass, something that could prove key in future missions to the moon, even Mars. The Dragon capsule began its journey atop a Falcon 9 rocket that launched from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It will now stay docked at the ISS for about four months, orbiting the Earth once every 90 minutes at an altitude of about 200 miles. Eventually, it will splash back down to Earth with some vital scientific data for teams on the ground. 10 second trivia, what is the most common type of rock where dinosaur fossils have been discovered? Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic, or volcanic glass? If you said sedimentary, you said it right. The ideal conditions for fossilization occur in places where sediment accumulates. Dinosaur bones were rapidly buried, protected from scavengers and decay, and then slowly compressed into a rock formation. It's one of the reasons so many dinosaur fossils have been well-preserved in the United States. Question for those of you who live in the Midwest, specifically the Dakotas. Have you ever been fossil hunting? I gotta say, one of the coolest things about being a journalist is getting to travel to some of the fascinating, lesser known places on this awesome planet. Well, my pal, Laura Coates, she just got back from one of the baddest assignments I've ever seen, Badlands, South Dakota. She literally found a prehistoric fossil during her hike through the national park. And the coolest part, you can too, check it out. South Dakota's Badlands National Park is famously full of fossils, that are millions of years old. You kind of never know what you're gonna get out here. There are so many fossils in the park that anyone can make discoveries here. So I teamed up with Kevin and Melina from the Black Hills Tour Company. This was a really lush landscape at times, so there's lots and lots of animals out here. It erodes one inch a year, and so these fossils get exposed slowly over time and you can find them. It's one of the best things about the Badlands is that they let you come out and climb up on all the mounds and all the rocks, and because it's eroding so quickly, you know, they're not so precious about it. I see some bones coming out up in here. Oh, I can't resist. I gotta go. You're adventurous, I'm impressed. 
That's when we came across something extraordinary. Oh, a skull. It's a full skull, yeah. The top of a skull, like almost totally flat, and there's a big hole underneath it. It's big, isn't it? It's a, like a massive head. The park's policy is to leave the fossils exactly where we find them. It's special. This is amazing. So we note the location and grab a few photos. We head to the visitor center to proudly report our find. We found this fossil out there. We have no idea what it is, but now this center actually has an area that has a fossil lab that can kind of help us identify what kind of fossil it might be. Inside the lab, paleontologists use these micro jackhammers to preserve visitors' fossils for research. We found some out. Found something. It's a pretty big fossil, mm -hmm. and we found it in the upper brule layer. Oh my. Um, I almost want to say Archaeotherium. What do you think? Oh. Hmm? Right. What's the uh, word? Archaeotherium? Archaeotherium. Archaeotherium. So archaeo means old or ancient. Okay. And therium or theria is beast, Where's so it literally area? means ancient beast. I found an ancient beast. Rules? Archaeotherium was a giant killer pig with large teeth and a powerful jaw. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> That's a really good find. The staff said it was one of the largest killer pigs they've seen at the park. So you're telling me I, I came to the Badlands, mm -hmm. went through some of the different formations, mm -hmm. and it was able to find a fossil that was maybe 33 million years old? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yep, yep. That's Isn't amazing. That cool? Yes. Isn't that awesome? The paleontologists leave to start digging up the fossil while I carve out my own little moment. How cool is that? <laughs> I love this. Let's leave the fossils. <laughs> Did you know sharks are older than dinosaurs? Yep. And trees. The earliest evidence of shark fossils dates back as far as 450 million years ago, which means these creatures have been around at least 190 million years before dinosaurs, and they would have been around before Pangaea broke apart. And scientists believe sharks have survived five mass extinctions, one of which wiped out around 96% of all marine life. The island nation of Taiwan just won its first Little League World Series in 29 years. They shut out the team from Nevada and won seven to nothing on Sunday. Taiwan's pitcher, Lin Chinse, gave up just one hit in five innings. The 12 year old's fastball was clocked at more than 80 miles per hour during the tournament. For reference, the average speed of a fastball in the major leagues, 94. Taiwan has won 18 Little League World Series titles overall, including five straight from 1977 to 81. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a Minneapolis training program that aims to help more women become firefighters. We want to push the women to not just reach the bar. We want them to crush glass ceilings. We want them to show up and be undeniable that they deserve to be there because we do. According to the National Fire Protection Association, only 9% of the nation's firefighters are women. And the trainers in this program are trying to fight the stigma that women can't meet the physical demands. When they call 911, they're calling you on their worst day and they need you to come and save them and you have to be physically ready for that. Firefighting is an extremely physical job and we must be prepared for that. You're literally doing this to save a life. You being in shape and physically prepared can determine if someone lives or dies. One workout at a time, those women are proving that the desire to help people is one of the most heroic actions of all. All right, superstars, time for some shout outs now. First one goes to Mrs. Pepin at CDA Charter Academy in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Thank you for all the kind letters from your sixth graders. They made our day. And from our YouTube channel, Mr. Neff at Waynesboro Area Middle School in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching us every day. And did you know I used to wrestle some of your alums back in the day when I went to New Cumberland and Lemoyne Middle Schools in the Harrisburg area in PA. Tomorrow is Your Word Wednesday. Follow me at Koi Wire on the socials. Put your unique vocabulary word and definition in the comment section of my most recent post, and we'll choose a winner to help us write tomorrow's show. Put your school, city, and state in there too so we can get you your shout out. Hope you have a terrific Tuesday, everyone. See you right back here tomorrow. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.